Welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining us. On the last video, we discussed and showed you the operating mode. We used the handheld wizard to download and then license a calibration file. On today's video, we're going to show you basic editing and saving a custom tuning file. We are going to discuss tree view navigation. We'll make some simple changes to your fans, show you where the fueling and spark tables are located, and we're going to show you how to save out a custom tuning file. Okay, now that we've licensed our vehicle and downloaded our calibration file, let's take a look around and see what kind of things we can edit. Under the tree view located on the left side, you'll see categories with all the different types of parameters or things that you can change within the engine controller. Everything from your air conditioner, looks like to your cranking fuel, your radiator fans, knock sensors, rev and speed limiters, you have spark adjustments, torque management, torque calculation, you can get in there and you have variable cam timing adjustments. Also over on the left side underneath the tree view you'll notice there's a several tabs all, scalars, functions, surfaces, and modified. The difference between a scalar, a function, and a surface, a scalar is a single value. It could be a fan setting you know, such as uh, a particular degree on when your fans turn on to a particular degree that the temperature needs to drop in order for the fans to shut off. Um, simple minor things like your speed limiter. Instead of 112 miles an hour, you can make it 120 miles an hour. It's just a single value. And then you have your functions. Your functions are 2D. So those are things like this. It's You've got two columns, RPM and microseconds. This is a dwell time versus RPM as an example. So the functions are all broken out in their own tree view. Same thing as the scalars. If you want to get in and make changes to the scalars, you can see they're just individual values. You can break those out so all the scalars are in a tree view by themselves. We also have the surfaces. The surfaces are the 3D graphs. Let's go to fueling, for example, take a look at power enrichment. You'll notice that it's a 3D surface. So you have your X RPM, your Y MG, MG cycle cylinder, and then you have your surface value, which right now is being represented as air fuel ratio, which you can uncheck there and you can go back to the engineering units. We'll take it back and leave it converted. On the surfaces, we also have a 3D graph function, so you can get it into 3D editing, which we'll talk about later. And then there's the Modified tab. Now, at this point, we haven't made any changes to the calibration file. If you do have changes to your tune, then you can see a list of only the items that there are changes made to. So I like displaying everything as all, so it groups everything up into one tree view, so I can find all my scalars, functions, and my surfaces in one place. We're going to go in and just make a couple quick changes to the fan settings just to show the modified tree view. I'm going to lower this 10 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to say rather than 108 degrees Celsius, the high speed fan coming on, I'm going to tell it to come on at 98 degrees Celsius. The same thing with the low speed fan. It's at 103 now. I'm going to lower it 10 degrees Celsius, tell it to come on at 93. You can continue down the line and hit all your fan settings and lower them. I'm going to skip over that for now and I'm going to jump back down to the modified tab and if you notice just the two things that we made changes to are showing up. So then at that point you can go in and you can look at just that one value and then over to the far right you'll notice it has the stock value so you can do a quick compare. So let's jump back over to the all. Let's take a look around and see what kind of other things we have the ability to make changes to. So under fuel you notice there's quite a bit of different fueling. I want to come down specifically to your power enrichment above storage. Power enrichment above storage is going to be your open loop. It's going to be your wide open throttle enrichment fueling surface. So what it's going to do is take your base fueling and it's going to add a certain amount of additional fuel on top of that in order to richen it up during wide open throttle. So that's going to be the main place that you're going to make all your wide open throttle fueling changes. And down here under spark is where you're going to find your wide open throttle spark table. And that's where you're going to make all those changes. 
it's going to be all your open loop stuff. So this particular file ranges anywhere from you know, seven and a half degrees to 20 degrees of ignition timing. That's for a 2012 6.4 liter Challenger. So then you get in, you have all your variable cam timing, so your intake cam position at wide open throttle, your exhaust cam position at wide open throttle. Some torque management, you keep your eye on that, especially drive-by wire. If the torque management's not set up correctly, it'll close throttle on you, have a loss of performance. So you want to always take a look around there. Now depending on if your vehicle is running the neural network or not will depend on whether volumetric efficiency surfaces will work. On the newer vehicles, for Chrysler anyways, they run what they call a neural network. So if you go up under fuel, I believe it's register 2, yeah, there we go. The use A and N, if it's checked, that means it's using the neural network logic and any changes to your volumetric efficiency to try to add or take away fueling will have zero effect. So on the newer vehicles, you know, give or take around 2009, 10 and newer, you'll want to check to see if that switch is checked. If it is, and you need to make changes to the volumetric efficiency of the engine or to those surfaces, then you want to uncheck that A and N, save that, then you can go make changes to your VE tables, bank one and bank two, if you're running the V8. Also, I'm going to make it just a quick global change here. I'm going to multiply this by 5%. And you notice that it turns red, showing we've increased the value, we've added to it. We have a little toggle button, which is kind of nice, where you can go back and you can look at the stock. So if there's a particular cell that you want to see, you can see that cell, 50, 52. So it toggles back and forth there. If you need a little more resolution, you can also increase or decrease the decimal places. When you really get in and start fine tuning, that's always a nice little function we have there. So I'm not going to get too much more in depth at this point. In our next episode, we're going to get into opening an SYK file in advanced editing. For now, we're going to save out the couple changes we made. We have a customer tune details where you can put in your information and notes if you want or if you're doing remote tuning or local tuning for a customer you want to put in some of their build information you can. Otherwise it's going to take you to our default directory in my documents pro tuning suite. We're going to store it here. We're just going to give it a name of test. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for our next video where we get into advanced editing. From there, we'll move into advanced features, and we'll show you how to update your local database and update the software. Until then, take care.